welcome back, Eric Ostrich. We're here to talk about great lines and live view. Yeah, so it's uh, not too much to show off. Um, so this is a live view. <laughs> Um, we can kill this off. Oops. Uh, do what? Stick that over there, and we can show that it's doing something by. Let's see, can I make this the. Uh, uh, it looks really ugly. <laughs> but, uh, all right, get ready for it. Everyone's seated, right? Boom, it just updated. <laughs> and if we reconnect, make sure to pay attention to those eight, right? Nine. <laughs> but it doesn't stay selected. Yeah, well, I mean, it changed, right? So. Yeah. You didn't select the nine. Um, yeah, so that's the, I don't know, there's not too much going on there, I guess, but. Uh, uh, this is the whole thing, right? So it's got, it's just, since it's only a single paragraph tag, I went with this, the straight sigil. Uh, so it joins an internal uh, web channel, or, you know, Phoenix channel, it's called Player Presence, and then grabs a current one, and then <coughs> anytime that changes, which is an internal, uh, it's just a little server that tracks anytime a new player comes online, uh, either through a game, Sorry, whenever someone reconnects through this WebSocket or there's a scrape that happens on old Telnet based games, uh, it updates the, the account, kind of player stat stuff, and then also just tells the server that it, <clears throat> something changed, right? So we have update count, which then goes through and rebroadcasts it down here. So it just rebroadcasts the current total, uh, which this thing up here is listening to uh, and just reassigns the count and renders and that's it. Um, so there we go, here's our, here's our, here's our 23 line example. Turn that up. Yeah, good, yeah, here we go. Here we go. 17. That's true, yeah, here we go. How far can we squish it? <laughs> Sign this down here. Just jam this all in a single line. There we go. Twelve. The format was easier. Yeah. Um. Uh. Let's see. The other thing that is a website or a, a live view is um, this page. So this is the number of the uh, open web clients on Grapevine. So that's what this is, right? So if we uh, go ahead and quit it. I can spell quit, of course. Uh, you can see that it updated behind the scenes. Put this on the uh, right. There we go. Right. <coughs> Figuring out magnet. Here we go. You reconnect, and then it just shows up. So, um, and that'll work for all of the whatever. <coughs> um, so, similar thing going on here. This was actually the first thing that I did for Live View. And I'll take a minute to disappear because you, if I have the same session token, you can reconnect. So like, you can refresh this page as much as you want, and it saves the same buffer. Um, so yeah, this was the first thing that I did. This was uh, this was weird to do because I tried. I tried uh, one thing to know. Where is this page? Admin dashboard index. So I tried doing it. Without this, uh, this music bootstrap, so there's divs everywhere. But <clears throat> if you pull this to the full thing, um, it was being weird because I was trying to stick this div at the top of the live view. So if we look at web live admin, so I was trying to stick it here. So I was trying to do like div classes, the, the call, whatever. Um, and something to know is that LiveView adds its own. Oh, it's really tiny. Uh, adds its own div that you, you can't like mess with, um, at least currently. But uh, also here's that huge session. <laughs> um, 
So that's that's something to I don't know be aware of. But then I was like, what am I doing? It's just the template. Just stick it above it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know. If there's here's here's a, I did poorly. Here's 79 lines. But I, this was before I realized how to actually render and do you have to do uh, dot L E E X the leaks stuff, um, which is very important. Because otherwise, it's just a standard EEX, and the live EEX is, has different stuff uh, to it to make it faster. Um, <coughs> so, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we can wanna be brave and see if we can make this happen a lot like live. Make this into a template. And then. I don't actually know if this will work, so here we go. Uh, what do we call this? I'm not sure. So we call it that, and then we copy this. Oh no, actually, sorry, it's got to be a. Um, so it, it does need to be a real view instead of a live view. Uh, views, having. Oh, I have a dashboard view. Here we go. Uh, what was that thing down there? So live web templates dashboard games dot leaks. Paste this thing here. Has no idea what to do with it apparently. Uh, and then we can do copy this dashboard view dot render uh, games HTML. And I don't know if you have to. I think it'll figure it out with the lex thing. Uh, then you just give it the assigns, uh, alias it, web, admin, dashboard view, spell that correctly. I don't know how well that works on a reload, so we'll just fully refresh that. Uh, need to alias the time view, apparently. Something edited it. That's weird. Okay, nothing changed. So there we go. Look at that, it worked. <laughs> uh, if we quit, I right, can see it automatically re -render, or re renders all that fun stuff. So there we go. Uh, <clears throat> so I don't really know what else to show, so if anyone wants to hope get something. Can you hold the inspector again? Sure. So That's that, not it. That, that, Wrapping was all that data provided by you or something else? Uh, which one? Just the, this? You know. This is the. Uh, so here it's a session. Okay. So I think it's because there's an open client that apparently has a lot of data. Um, so if we quit and then reload, it should be skinny. Yeah. Okay. So that's the. You're passing in a, a decent set of. Render JSON as a what? I think a JWT token. Interesting. So I see also the data and attribute for games view. Yeah. Once it's with a yeah. 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 We can take a peek and see it passes in the huge session and then re-renders all this fun stuff. So here's our static parts, and then this is the the zero stuff is the dynamic. So if we re render this, you can see here's our zero key. So then that gets inserted in wherever the zero was. I think uh, Jose has a Twitch stream that's probably still up where everyone is like actually building this, and it's pretty pretty interesting. And the <coughs> the Elixir Coffee U keynote from Chris McCord should exp like has at least slides um, showing like how the performance stuff works and whatnot. So. That was what I'm just curious about how when you this connection on the client. So if you set the offline and then yeah, set this up on it. This command for it. So if we do something over here. Oh, it still worked. <laughs> <laughs> no, wow, that would be awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, live use magic. Go figure.
gets around off offline. <laughs> um, what if we kill the server? <laughs> Is that a better? Yeah. Yeah, so the, the error is, is just re trying to reconnect, mm -hmm. and so it should, uh, when it reconnects, it should trigger a re-render, which then, oh. like, you'll, you'll, you'll see it, uh, should be, at least, I don't know, do we, yeah, right? Here's our live socket, so reconnected, and then re-rendered, presumably, because uh, that's still up. Or now it works. I guess you had to refresh the page. <coughs> um, yeah, it should it should just be it should be essentially the same thing as, as like uh, the socket disconnects, then it's just HTML on the page, and then when it reconnects, it just does the same thing that you would do when you load the page for the first time. I think that uh, guy kind of like patch there. It's um, that's like. The state when it's on now, right? And then so like they can you can recreate your like your live your live views like state like based on that. So like you I think I in the Elixir Slack I accidentally like answered someone's question the wrong way and then the person of came and was like, no, don't do that. <laughs> like, if you store too much stuff in there, it's like scrubbing all that in the DOM and the wires. Basically, like the basically don't stuff. do this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it works. So are you, are you saying that you should minimize how much you put in the and that's what's going to control the Yeah, that's so <laughs> so I had suggested that the camera was exactly what the person was going on about, but um, oh, I think they're like, they really want to get the app con struct in their live view, but like that doesn't exist um, in the live view. There's app socket, but um, they're like, I think they have all these helper methods for like getting the current user and all that kind of stuff based on the cons. So they want to call that, so they want to pass in the full con. But I had suggested just in mount, like get what you want out of the con and then like discard it. But I think whatever you pass into the con, or, sorry, in the mount in the first place, like when you, uh, you show like where you said, like live render in the template. Yeah, so like there he passes in clients. Um, so anything you pass in there gets like stored in that that thing. So the, I, I said like, oh, just put like con in there and then throw it away on map. But it still saves all that in the markup when you're, when you're done. So that's the wrong answer. <laughs> and then it's, why does it do that? Um, so it's like, it's like, it's like the, Requirement based on the whole programming model, and then like when you disconnect and then reconnect, it needs to be able to like like replay the world. So you just want to save like the minimal state or the minimal amount of data to like recreate your state. So yeah, you can see here I apparently ignore whatever I pass in, so it's totally <laughs> it's only there for the first render, I guess. So um, that that actually brings up something that I was. Still kind of confused by it. I noticed a couple times through messing around with the errors where it would reset to, I think they call it the last known good state. And I don't think that was either what was unknown or what was the most recent successful save. Sometimes it seemed like it was somewhere in the middle, and I was like, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't understand what magic is going on there at this point. But does, does that make any sense, or would you uh, think it would be what not was be, right? Well, there's like, I think, three things. There's like the last state that it was, mm -hmm. there's what you like put into the state on mount, and then there's what you pass into mount when you call like live render. Mm -hmm. um, so it could have been the first thing. I don't know, it also just could have been buggy because it's so good. Yeah, speaking of buggy, I'll show you the commit that I just reverted. <laughs> Temporarily comment out live view. There's something weird where like every, it was every, I don't know, 30 to 60 seconds, I had two, two well, however, however much, two, 300 errors a day. Because I, I only noticed it because my Sentry sent me an email, hey, you're at 80% of your budget for the free tier. <laughs> Uh, and I was like, what? <laughs> uh, 
so then I looked and it's just a very static like 300 a day and it was something with um, uh, let me see if I can just how do I uh, isn't there a way to do this through this thing I just don't know what is hanging out in Sentry, so it's not. Uh, yeah. Uh, where's the arrangement? Here we go. Um, last fourteen days is. Resolved. I don't even know how to use Sentry apparently. Is resolved. Go. Uh, yeah, 8.7k. So this was popping up. Function clause matching and channel log mount. Which is like, I don't know what that is. Um, and then I updated to the latest. Uh, master, and then I got a new one where old session didn't work in the new thing, so I was like, I don't want to, that was every 30 seconds, so I was like, I'm just going to comment this out. <laughs> <laughs> like it's still, that's what, that's actually what this is right now. So this isn't live, it's just the, the rendered on the server. Um, so that's good news, if there's a bug, we, in, the, in the JavaScript WebSocket part, it still works. <laughs> So. That's the idea behind the first render. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that's that's why you'll see it. It'll do two. So it renders when the page loads, and then the WebSocket connects to re-renders. So. Yeah, to that point, I've heard that uh, if you have like a really expensive query or calculation, some people have said that that showed up on their radar and their logs that that was kind of happening twice as often if they put it in the live view. Yeah. Uh, not sure what the, the answer is there, other than I don't have slow stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this is Elixir. It doesn't have yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> Cash it. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Like, render a loading sprinter. Like, on the initial Ooh, there you go. Re render. Yeah. You kind of lose the ability for it to work without JavaScript then, but it's just going to give yeah, you could, twice as good performance. Like, you can do, it's like on the mount, you can just send self, like, do the slow thing, <laughs> and then in, the, in the handle info right below, you can catch it there. So that uh, might be better. Do you know if uh, live views are gen servers and you can use handle continue for that? Yeah. Oh, I don't know about handle continue. Uh, let's find out. No reply. State. Let's let Webpack do its thing. There we go. That's not it. This is it. No, it does not. All right. <laughs> uh, I guess because this this mount is a. a Probably rendering. No, when would this happen? So this this would be during the page load. It starts up the gen server with that session key. Uh, so I guess yeah. So this this isn't a gen server yet. Maybe question mark. I don't know. Um, Maybe not. Yeah. 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 So I think because you as you have there, you still have like the it acts in the gen server, and then you can say like handle info and like send self messages. Yeah, so it definitely is. It's like we can do next. So we can definitely do it down here. Um, <coughs> if I can type correctly. Uh, right. So we should, what was that on? Uh, client updates. So if we open a web client. Should see next here somewhere. 
or not, but it didn't fail. Oh no, sorry, this is, um, um, where's my, here, this thing. Okay, uh, it's not crashing at least. <laughs> yeah, so this is on the open web client. No, it should be, yeah, it should be on when this is happening. Client update. I actually don't know what. I put this in a weird spot. Let's put this here. So this is offline, right? So quit. So we should see. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it's not a gen server. And it's not a full gen server, we'll say. So invalid reply, no reply, stop socket. So that's, yeah, that's a little surprising. I would have assumed it would just be a standard thing. Standard dead server. Yeah, one more sure. question. Uh, so compared with Mitch's example, which was kind of around one client communicating with the server, uh, it seems like your use case here is clients connecting to a server, but then that event being broadcast out to everyone who's looking at the page. Uh, well, how is it integrating lively with like uh, page channels you were using for? Stuff. Yeah, so the uh, no. So uh, if people don't know, you can use Phoenix channels without the front end at all. Uh, it's just a pub sub internal thing. So when the the you just say endpoint subscribe with your channel, it defaults to the currently running process. Or I think I don't know if you can do it otherwise. So the current process subscribes to the channel, and then you just start anytime something gets broadcast out, you just get these. Handle info with that struct. Uh, this Phoenix socket broadcast topic event and payload, I think. Um, and you do whatever you want with it, and you can pub sub your way without anything on the front end. <laughs> um, if you want a bigger example of using Phoenix channels without channels, I guess. Uh, the whole WebSocket side of, so the whole chat side of this is internally a bunch of uh, endpoint subscribe. So like when you connect, you get you internally subscribe to to channels, uh, which then get broadcast back to you unsubscribe. Um, it's apparently the only two in this file, but uh, subscribe to your game tells channel, whatnot. Uh, there's a receive somewhere, but yeah, it's you, you can use it. Uh, I know someone who wrote actually broke Phoenix channels uh, like two years ago, two or three years ago. Um, they're building a. Uh, he's got a sweet domain like that, Apotheosis. Uh, you sign into this thing. So this used to be. Entirely, the internal uh, game was like thousands of gen servers, like one for each thing in the, like, I think each item was a gen server, each NPC, each room, each like molecule was a gen server, <laughs> like type of thing. And everything was using Phoenix channels to, to talk, talk to each other and then I just like broke it. <laughs> just from like the amount of traffic and, um, Whatever it was doing, yeah. So muds are helping out, <laughs> pushing technology somehow. More follow -up? Go for it. Uh, are there other features of Grapevine or uh, other apps in the ecosystem that you're interested in using Live View for? Uh, so we tried uh, the most recent thing that we had, so we bailed on it. Um, but this was so we were going to try and do a user registration wizard with Phoenix. I, I had it working in about an hour, including setup time. 
But then we were like, is it okay to use something highly experimental for the only way for users to enter the system? <laughs> so we, we uh, stepped away from that. Um, but yeah, it was pretty cool. It just rendered it rendered the form and then only the parts of the form that were visible. So like the two, two input fields that were like this page and then click next and then it just rendered the next two. Um, it was neat to watch as you typed out and like it showed the validations as you're doing it, but then the password was real, password fields are real weird with Phoenix channels or live view. Um, I would type out the first one, it would be fine, and I would type in the confirmation and you could watch the first one like lose some characters and like do something and then like when you're done typing it was fine and like matched. So I don't know what was going on, I didn't inspect it, so. It's pretty cool to have a like JavaScript list wizard within an hour when it would take you like two days with React. <laughs> so that's uh, the only other thing we've been looking at so far. 